Welcome to episode six of live.withcode.uk. Thank you to everyone who's taken part last week and welcome to anyone who um, this is your first week. Particular well done to Luke, who's last week's competition winner. I'll get you a prize sent out as soon as I can. This week, we're going to use four loops in Python to do iteration, which means repeating certain lines of code um, uh, over and over again to create a firework display using Turtle Graphics. Um, so before we do that, I just want to flag up how you can get involved in the competition. So on live.withcode.uk, click join the competition. Anyone can take part in all of the activities. They're all free and you don't need a login to do them. But you do need a login, uh, which is free, um, to win a prize. So if your school has registered, just click on your school name. If they've not registered, it's free for your school to take part. Um, but once they have, you can click on your school name, click on which group you're in. Now, um, if you've got an account already with tools.withcode.uk, you can log in. Most of you probably won't, so register as a student. It's all free. We don't use your personal details for anything other than working out and um, tracking your scores. Um, and then once you've registered, it will ask you for a code. Your school teacher has hopefully shared a group code with you um, so that you can take part in the competition. Once you've registered, it doesn't matter if you follow the links on the competition page or if you follow the links on the live.withcode.uk page, you get points for working through them. Um, so well done, and looking forward to seeing your entries for next week. So um, this week, we're gonna create a firework scene. So we're gonna have a 10 second countdown, and then when we get to zero, we're gonna launch some fireworks up into a night sky um, with random colors. So the, the point of today's um, session is to give you confidence um, using iteration for loops to repeat certain sections of code. So let's get started. It's live coding, which means you'll see all the mistakes that I make, um, but I'll hopefully invite you into the thought processes behind how it all works. So to begin with, let's start with our countdown timer. So um, we want to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We could just do all of the numbers, but the whole point of iteration is to make your code easier to maintain and avoid unnecessary repetition. So instead, we're going to use a for loop. Now you'll often see for i in range when you see examples, and I want to explain what that does. So a for loop means that we're going to have repetition. i is just the name of a variable that we use to count up to this number. So this repeats printing 10, 10 times. If we replace literally the value 10 with i, it's going to start with i as 0, and then each time as we loop through, i increases until we get to just one less than this value here. So if you want to picture what's going on, let's just print what range 10 does first. Um, so range 10 creates an iterable object, a little bit like a list where you can iterate through each value um, and repeat your code. So if we want to count down from 10, we need to say what value to start with, what value to finish with, and then how much to increase by. So um, the minus one means we're counting down. And notice it doesn't stop at this value. We need to go one lower than that value if we want to go down to one. OK, so if we want a countdown timer that actually pauses, we need to import time. Um, wouldn't it be wonderful if in life you could just import time, get some extra time to do stuff. And then time.sleep um, one second. So I'm going to comment out that time.sleep because I'm going to get bored of waiting for it each time I run the program. Um, but that's how it would work if you wanted um, your proper countdown timer. Okay, next we want a night sky. So let's um, put some comments in. Uh, this is countdown timer and then draw night sky. So um, in order to draw, we're going to use turtle graphics. So it makes sense to put all of your imports at the top. Um, so import turtle graphics and then T, make an object called T for our drawing, go inside that turtle module and create a new um, object of the turtle class. Right, so now that we've got T, we can say T dot forwards and say how far to move. Um, we want to start in the top left, go all the way round, down, left and back up again and then fill that in in black. So we're going to draw a square and fill it in. So. Um, we want the uh, help, we want to move forwards and then turn right by 90 degrees. And then that process of going forwards and turning right, we can repeat that four times. 
Um, so we're going to use help. <laughs> we're going to use a for loop for that. So for i in range four. So it doesn't actually matter what you call this variable. You can call it num or repeat or r, but often you see i, which just stands for index. So that's now repeated four times. We just need to start in the right position and make the size of our square the right size. Okay, so uh, t dot go to the coordinates at the top left are going to be minus 200 for the x coordinate and 200 for the y coordinate. And I want it to draw much faster than this. So t dot um, uh, speed and then zero makes it go as fast as you can. Then we want the size of our square to be um, 400 pixels. Okay, so we've gone all the way around the edge. We now need to fill in in black instead of just drawing it. So begin, um, fill. I can never remember if there's an underscore in there. We'll soon find out if I've got it wrong. And end, fill. Yeah, it doesn't know how to begin, fill. So we'll put an underscore in there. Fab. So we've got our night sky. Next, we want some um, fireworks. So draw fireworks. Okay, so we're going to start from the bottom of the screen and go up and then just draw lots of lines going out from the middle. So t dot go to um, middle of the screen is zero, bottom of the screen is minus 200. And let's change the color, spelt the American way irritatingly, um, red. Okay, notice how even though we've said go to, it will draw a line between where we were and where we've told it to go to unless we say t dot pen up and then t dot pen down at the end. Okay, next we need to make sure our turtle is pointing up so the firework goes in the right direction, not zooming into the crowd and um, exploding in people's faces. Uh, so t dot um, set heading um, 90. Doesn't know how to do that. It's irritating that um, the turtle module is inconsistent with underscores. Um, Okay, so it's hopefully facing the right way. T dot forwards, uh, forward, sorry, and then let's launch it up into the air. Okay, so when it goes up into the air, I don't want it to teleport. I want it to see it go up quite slowly. Um, so we'll change the speed to maybe four so we can see it zooming up into the sky. Maybe goes a bit higher up. Okay, so at this point, um, maybe we don't want to move forwards let's just go to a particular coordinate. So if we go to uh, the middle of the screen and then maybe 50, it will still go up in the sky, but those coordinates there, we can keep going back to um, as we draw kind of the, the circle part of the, the firework exploding. So I'm gonna have another repeat, uh, another block of code that's repeated for I in range. Um, so I'm gonna go for 36 times. There's 360 degrees in a circle, um, and if we draw 10 lines going out from the middle of our firework, um, then um, we, we're we going to repeat this block of code 10 times. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, we'll go to that position, and then we're just going to move forwards. Um, what's happened here? T dot forwards. Uh, by let's say 40 and then uh, it looks like the indentation is messed up here that's why we've got some errors um, so it goes up and then it just keeps moving forwards and backwards 36 times which I can't be bothered to wait for um, so when we do this we want to slow, uh, sorry, speed up, t dot speed, zero. So it's done that 36 times and then it stops. And then if we rotate a little bit, right by 10 degrees, we go up and then 36 times, we move forwards, we jump back, we rotate, we move forwards, we jump back, we rotate, and we've got ourselves a little firework. Okay. Um, uh, maybe we don't want to draw the trail up into the sky, otherwise it looks like a dandelion rather than a firework. So let's not put the pen down until um, we've gone to t dot go to our coordinates, and then maybe um, we can set the speed to fast after we've gone there originally, and then we're repeating less code inside our loop. It's more efficient. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
maybe each time we move forwards, we then need to go back to our starting position. Getting there, but we're not yet drawing our firework. Okay, so let's say t.pen down over here. That looks better. So we zoom up into the sky, we make a firework. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, all of this code, we probably want to repeat to draw multiple fireworks. So we're going to turn this into a function like we did last week. We'll define a function called firework. When we draw a firework, it would be nice to know where to draw it. So let's say an x coordinate, how high up in the sky, so y, and then a color, and maybe a size as well, so we can see how big the rocket is that goes up into the sky. So now, instead of saying always red, we can use this parameter here. Um, and then when we go to the start position, um, we can say the x coordinate here and the x coordinate here. Um, and then this will be the y coordinate. And then the amount that we move forwards is going to be the y coordinate. Um, that's going to be x. That's going to be y. OK, so we've defined our function. But we haven't actually called it yet. So let's say firework um, zero. How high up in the sky? Maybe a hundred. How big is it? Maybe fifty. Oh, and it says it needs four arguments. I've forgotten to say what color. So this time I'm going to go for a yellow firework. So the beauty of making a um, procedure like this is that you can then repeat it. So if we have one that is maybe 50 across, maybe a little bit lower in the, um, in the sky, that's a blue firework, that's a little bit smaller. We have a yellow firework and then a smaller blue one. What we can do is now repeat our fireworks. So maybe um, we should say 4x in range um, 10. Um, and then this time we can say an x coordinate here and we're going to draw um, some random coordinates. So Python doesn't know how to do random stuff unless you tell it how to. So let's say the y coordinate is going to be a random number. So random dot rand into random number between say um, 0 and 100. Um, and then the size can be random dot rand int um, between say 20 and 50. So we're now going to have 10 fireworks that are all in a similar position. Now the x coordinate is going to increase ever so slightly but they're all so close together that you can't really notice the difference. So we're just going to say x times um, 20 so they're all spaced out now. That's the first one. The next one should be moved along a little bit. So we're getting there, we've got a firework display, but they're all the same colour, which looks a bit dull. Um, it might be better if we iterate again through um, all of the different colours. Um, so we can have a list called colours equals, so a list here, let's have red, um, white and blue. For now, I'm just going to choose one at random, but one of the challenges could be to iterate through to use X to work out where in the list to look. Um, so let's say random.choice colors. So hopefully we're going to choose a random color, go to a random position, and then draw some fireworks in that position. So your challenges um, for this code um, are um, you could um, make your uh, fireworks appear in um, uh, in sequence order. Um, firework colors appear in order. So one white, then one red, then one blue, or something like that. Um, you could draw a star in the sky. You could draw a hundred stars in the sky. So the beauty of iteration is once you've told Python how to do one thing, you can just repeat it and make it happen as many times as you like. Um, help. So I will share a link to this code. Um, remember, there are four free interactive online um, resources that you can work through um, on live.withcode.uk or in the description on this video. Um, and if you join the competition, then you can get points um, and the points can turn into prizes. Thanks ever so much for taking part. Um, and I'll look to see what people vote for for the next activity 
um, which will be next Wednesday. Thanks. Look after yourselves. All the very best. Bye-bye.